sorry it's been a while, but uh, I'm back. What I want to do today is I want to get this all sort of up and running again. It took me a while because I didn't uh, use it for a while. And when I turned it back on, there was these audio leaks where I was getting these kind of buzzing noises and stuff. But we're going to just do a forward, forward sweep today. And uh, I have to say... This little spurt box here has been absolutely fantastic. It's from Appydroid. It's one of uh, Appydroid's budget radios, but so far it's been one of the best. It's got two FMs, which means that there's air band on it. Uh, there's AM, and then there's nine short waves on it. So it's a multi-band radio. Uh, small enough to carry around if you're doing a paranormal investigation or a ghost hunt or whatever. And this is what we've been using for the last few months. What we do is we connect it up to our soundboard here. A lot of people tell me that uh, my manual uh, soundboard and my pedals is kind of outdated that you can do it all on software now but i actually like manual things so um instead of using a, a a higher level of noise gate to reduce noise what i actually use is compression which to explain in in, in simple terms is when you make a, a sound file it comes up with little, a little graph, the up and down lines kind of thing. What the compression does is it compresses those up and down lines. And when it compresses, it actually brings the level down, it brings the volume down. The only thing is, I have to compensate it and boost it back up again. But when I'm, when I'm bring, compressing it, the, the noise levels that are on some of these radios is very low, which means it goes below the threshold, and um, that's how I sort of reduce my sound. Um, I also use um, a delay. I have three different delays, which uh, together sort of comes to about three seconds. So when I turn on the radio, it takes about three seconds for it to go through the, the system. Normal circumstances, I use a reverse pedal, but it says uh, we're not going to use that today. Some people like it, some people don't. See, the reason why I use it is because I didn't want to... I wanted to use audio with less uh, room for pareidolia. Of course, there is going to be pareidolia in that, but I wanted less... I wanted less mistakes. I wanted less uh, room for error kind of thing because when we're scanning forward, we're getting snippets of radio and radio words. And a lot of people can just make what comes out of the radio fit what we're asking and that. Well, you know, doing this since 2016, 2017, we know it works. We know it works sometimes, not all of the time. Now, today's session, I don't know how successful it's going to be because I haven't done sessions in a while. So what I've done this morning is I ran the box for a while just to get things going, if you know what I mean. But actually getting this system here to work was like as if I left an old car sitting for about a year and I was trying to start it. There was all sorts of, um, there was all sorts of noise leaks coming through and I, and I had to go through all the plugs and it was like I had a jump start and thing. But I think I have it right. And if I do get a buzz, I'm going to uh, noise reduce it in post-production. So, yeah. 
right, we're going to turn on, we're going to go FM. And I'm going to stick my headphones on. It's been a while since I've been on camera. From we, we have... Interface. Notice I de-pimped my amplifier. I thought it looked a bit naff. It kind of looks less Steve Hoffish now. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I think it looks more professional in the black. Of course, I had to leave my little flashy light here. You know? Right. Mo my name is Sam. Can anybody come and speak to me, please? Players come. Just in a bit. We got him. That's John. One, two. Four, cook, so. Does it want to do? One, two. Crocking. One, two. Uh, I'm not happy with the sound coming through the microphone. One, two. Back in May. One two. 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 Raspiness to the sound coming through the microphone, but we'll deal with it for today. Spoiler alert! Don't be surprised if Ed makes an appearance. Well, in an audio sense, because I've heard him a number of times today. as well. Funny, funny enough, a lot of uh, operators uh, get edge. Nobody seems to know who edge is. Who can come and talk to me? Chrissy. Ken. I'm a bit out of practice. First up. After rep, I'm happy. Motocine. Give the result. It's a guitar. It was the best. It's Ashton. It seems to be coming through nice and clean now. Fine. Mad again. Help push him. It's just a little. And then it's. Some money. If anyone can hear me, can you say hello, Sam, for me, please? If you can hear me right now. Like. Those who that is and you're gonna go okay. it feels like Yeah come that's it somebody mentioned about my dog earlier on. That was before I started to record. Starting with 
Can somebody say hello, Sam, if you can hear me right now, please? Comedy. Crap. Keep on. Good. All the Sebel. In Parap. Because. You're wrong. No. During the start, experience in the world. In a court. Ten times one. Trivial pickled. Who wants to say hello to my dog? <laughs> He down it. See up under the and tell always saying like you're big. Yeah. Who can hear me or see me right now, please? That's Kate. Is in bind to the ship. The lamp. So the video doesn't make it. Shot. Burning. are a bit tight. No. The person. Over here. So you that. If anyone can hear me right now, could you tell us what your name is, please? With you. Is everyone? <laughs> the clap. So get the Shut up. You know, last. No. Fourteen. Home in time. Let's Let's meal. I know I'm not getting the volume level I want from the device. For some reason, everything is cranked up to the last. But there's something wrong. But it is. 
need update but it is coming through to me, so Test. Tell us why you want the tube. Many Let's be honest. Can anybody tell me if Ed is around, please? In your chat. One in both. Too close to the microphone mix it. With us? I'm a bit rust. At night. It's been a while. Porter is. One, two. I just restart again. I lost my audio. Country. So I've st had to start again, basically. My name is Sam. Is there anyone here that can talk to me, please? There wasn't a bit of audio. You just Be there, suddenly just caught on my. Mm. It's fine. It's fine. Could you tell us what your name is, please? I don't know why she. I'm Tom. Could you tell me what my name is, please? Mother's mixtape. Trust me. And with you. And out. What's up? Just in case. I guess where I mentioned the time and the date and is, is, like the mobile death. is wiped out of this. It is quarter past the seven in the evening, p.m. 23rd of November 2023. I should have said that at the beginning, but I'm a bit rushed now. Could you say my name if you can hear my voice right now, please? Much better. Say hi, Sam. You like some? few minutes now. Please say what you want to say now. We just have to turn the radio off. If you can. The class.
Seems to be nice and clean. On the guitar, Perry. This is the world. Right, I'm going to finish in five on the tax with you and the right four, three, and six, two, one. Thank you for coming through. You have. Really? Could you speak to me later on if I turn the radio back on? Exactly. Who was the dog? Three four. The third went. I'm going to finish now. Before that, one simple Do press of a Audio backwards. Hello? Right, I'm going to try and explain what I was did explain earlier on when I had no audio. Uh, something else I was trying, I did put a post, uh, I was back a couple of weeks ago, where I was looking at a channel called Saving Ghosts. And I can't remember his name, but he he came up with with uh, an idea of using an ultrasonic detector, which is uh, basically is a bat detector. And it actually was quite reasonable. It was quite cheap. It was twenty pounds on Amazon. Now what you get, what you get is you get the the box, and in the box you get another box, and this box is basically the the case for the radio and inside the box you get the circuitry now the modern one used to have used to have the the kit where you had to solder in all the components but this kit was simply plug and play you got the speaker you got the uh, you got the knobs and you got the uh, little uh, microphone, it's a high sensitive microphone that you put on the top here. I wasn't happy with putting it into a, a cardboard box. I wanted something different and the guy in Saving Ghost, he done the same thing. So I'm going to show you what I, what I, what I came up with. Ta -da. Now this is my little ultrasonic detector. There's the uh, there's the high sensitive microphone. The uh, the circuit board is in between these two these two buttons here. This one here is the volume and the on switch. Now I I put in a separate power switch, which when I press and then I have a little just to 
because this sometimes can be quiet, it's got a little light, just to let you know that it's on. And uh, this here is for turning on and off uh, line outs, because I want to have a line out to put into the system and stuff. Now basically when you turn it on, it's kind of quiet. And it doesn't pick up my voice. It picks up certain parts of my voice. Ultrasonic, uh, ultrasonic frequencies is frequencies that's below human hearing. Now somebody wrote in the comments of that uh, post, if it's ultrasonic, why can we hear it? Well, what it actually does is it picks up the ultrasonic frequencies and it converts it to what we can hear. So, this does not pick up my voice, but it picks up certain parts of it, if you can hear. And, let me see, there's a... Where's the silver paper? up certain parts of the and that some of that sound we actually can't hear with our own ears to pick that up before the dog actually chooses the pieces so his idea was maybe communication happens some of communication happens into ultrasonic frequency. So he decided to start experimenting with a, an ultrasonic frequency, aka a bat detector. And I thought, that actually is quite a, not a bad idea. So rather than just, you know, look at his video and, and find out for myself and decided for 20 quid I was going to make it myself. Well, it was uh, a little extra for the little bits and pieces that I got here, but it's it's, it's reasonable to make one of these. Um, and I picked up something earlier on. Now, I haven't tested it. I'm only still sort of in the, in the, sort of in the process of building this. Uh, it has a 9 volt battery at the back. It did have just a, a clip-on 9 volt connector that you put inside the little box here. Um, but I decided I'd get a, a, a 9 volt uh, unit that you have to cut into the case itself. I don't like, I don't like, you see a lot of spur boxes for sale that people make and they're stuck on the back here as an extra just stuck on uh, I still have to I'm finishing off here and putting another speaker here and that but uh, yeah that's it but I did pick up a piece of audio earlier on now what I did was I put this in my bathroom I closed the door came in here closed the door and I uh, I had it near the bath and I turned on the cold water tap but I had a recorder running before I turned the cold water tap. So this is, the audio that came out of this wasn't directly, you know, these aren't wired up yet, so I'm still, you know, in the process of finishing it now. But um, I decided I would um, just put the Zoom uh, H4 right up near the speaker and that. And I had recorded a couple of minutes before I turned the tap on. But before I turned the tap on, I discovered, like there was only three minutes of audio because the battery went flat in this. I didn't check properly. But within the, before I turned the tap on, I actually picked up something. And it's a human voice. I try to clean it up as best I can. I'm still in the process of cleaning it up to find out what it says. But I'll play that little piece for you now.
right at the end, it sounds like a male voice saying something like effort or something like that. I still, I'm, you know, I'm not long after doing that, so I, I, you know, I need some work to clean it up properly and that. What I had done was I slowed it down and I, I put a bit of uh, noise reduction in there to try and clean up around it and stuff. But I play the tiny little bit where at the end where where I think that there possibly is a human voice there. I believe that there's something in there, but uh, and and there seems to be something at the beginning as well. Some of these things sometimes are difficult to clean up because it's a low tone voice in a high noise environment and uh, chipping away at the noise is very very difficult because you know you can you can distort the audio if you go too far with it you know so you know we'll see how that goes but I think uh, Saving Ghost his, his, um, his aim for using the device was a kind of like a direct radio voice to me that would be what I got there would be sort of EVP you know because um, it's picked up on the recorder and that and as I said before when you're doing EVPs one of the important things with EVPs is background audio support background audio support seems to be something that EVPs stick to, like a static noise of a radio or uh, even water noise or bird noises, uh, traffic noise, as long as there's no human voices in it and stuff like that. That could be the case for this particular case, but we'll see, because I did decide to put a preamp in there which amplifies the audio which isn't connected up yet so I have a lot to do and um, this here is actually the tuner where uh, this is the tuner that's uh, attached to the circuit itself the circuit the little circuit that you get in your pack uh, this there's a circuit behind this button here and that is actually just a preamp so what I intend to do is I intend to uh, connect the audio up to a little preamp and there's another volume uh, knob there where I can actually amplify the sound that's coming out of the speaker because um, the low, the very low tones in there is very low and you can't hear it at all. You have to put your ear up to it and stuff like that. But obviously, if there was bat sounds and stuff like that, it will pick it up easy enough. But you don't hear the static that goes on. And that's what I want. I want the static to, to be amplified. So I decided to use that and then have a line out, which means I can amplify it by putting it through the system. So I still have a long way to go yet. And I have a lot of... Uh, tidying up to do inside the box because it's a mess but we will get there at some point but that is just something different that I decided to try and I think I've done a neat enough job I think do you know I seen a Facebook uh, post yesterday from an ITC researcher and basically says, am I preaching to the wrong people? Not me, but the person that I was talking about, um, that who's had the post. And, you know, I got the impression, uh, you know, of sort of frustration in the line of ITC on a platform like YouTube. So I wanted to talk about that for a second. It's not uncommon to be kind of frustrated with YouTube and f platforms if you're into ITC. Now here's the flipping thing. You need to ask yourself one question in relation to all of this. 
Are you an ITC researcher first, or are you a YouTuber? You know, I choose to be... I used to... I, I, I choose to be a ITC researcher and experimenter first, and a YouTuber second. Because if you put the YouTube before the work, very often you're disappointed. <laughs> because what you're basically, what you're involved with in YouTube is, it's an entertainment pl platform. With ITC, with many of us, it's a journey of our own personal um, discovering uh, you know, of the paranormal, our own journey with the paranormal, um, tr trying to get more experiences of the paranormal and that. And to me, that's more important than views on YouTube. Like, for instance, uh, Zero GITC, uh, Joshua Sean. He's a audio engineer, very good at what he does. Talks a lot of stuff that I don't, I can't, you know, I can't pronounce some of the words that he talks about in the line of audio engineering. And he's involved in ITC, and I think he's flipping brilliant. But his channel isn't growing very quickly. He should be. You know, if if we were if we were to if we were to judge uh, uh, views and sub counts uh, as as uh, you know, the more subs you have, the better you are. He should be better. He should have more subscribers than me, but he doesn't. Annabella Cardoso, one of the big best, uh, run a uh, highly renowned paranormal researchers, ITC researchers, I'm nearly sure I'm still have more s subscribers than her. It doesn't make me better than her. She's a, you know, she's had a wealth of experience and uh, decades of experience working in, you know, the laboratory of acoustics and working with very renowned people in ITC. YouTube is a completely different thing. YouTube is just a platform to share. But I think with me, you know, the way I see it is enjoy what you're doing and share it with people. But most of all, get the enjoyment yourself of doing it. Then you won't worry about subs and views as much. You know, and subs and views doesn't, doesn't, you know, it's got no reflection on, on you as, a, as a, a person that's exploring the paranormal. When you think about it, the people that do entertaining paranormal research, or not entertaining paranormal research, ghost hunts, jump scares and paranormal entertainment they they get they get big views on youtube they get you know they do well on youtube because people can sit down in front of the tv and eat popcorn and enjoy the show but if you're into itc that's different it's not the same it's kind of like a paranormal science in some way and yeah, it can be frustrating where, you know, you get a, a response on a spur box or you get a, a, a great EVP and not many people is interested because it's not a jump scare that entertains people. You know, it, that, that, that's not, you know, it's, it's YouTube. Do you know what I mean? YouTube's... But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be fascinated by that EVP or fascinated by uh, a spurt box response or whatever. 
because that's the gold at the end of the day. Not how many views you can get on YouTube. You know? There's some guy, I'm not going to even mention his name, he has a big issue with me, and currently there's a bit of a, there's a bit of drama going on there, and I'm keeping it off this channel. It's on another channel. But, he calls himself a paranormal researcher, right? But he copies other people. He only, he, the only knowledge he seems to have is people he looks up to. He's not doing anything... He's not doing anything different, or he's not trying anything different. Um, you know, he's got these celebrity spurt box sessions, and because he puts the celebrity's name on the title and puts a thumbnail with it with the celebrity's picture on it, that draws the views. The thing is, when you draw those views, most of them don't know what you, you ITC research is. You could fake that whole session and most of them would not know that it was faked because they're a fan of that celebrity. That's not ITC. You know, that's not ITC research as we look at it, you know? So don't be worried about views and subs and any of that kind of stuff. I, I only put, I put stuff out here just to share. And memories for me, you know, when I get older, I'm most likely going to forget a lot of things, which I am forgetting already. So if I can back up my own memory up here with videos on YouTube, at least I can read, I can jog my memory by looking back on things, you know. Just enjoy what you're doing. You know, yeah, in the past I called out some people and, and stuff. And, you know, I had, I had issues with Hoff and all that kind of stuff. But, a lot, you know, what I found is it kind of takes away from what you set out to do yourself. So focus on yourself. Enjoy what you're doing. You know, it, you know if you go out and do a paranormal investigation or a ghost hunt or whatever and... You know, you put it up on YouTube and that. And, you know, you're, you're, you're genuine and stuff. Just be proud of your work. You don't need people to clap you on the back. You know? If you're doing it honestly and you're doing it, you're, you're doing your own thing and you're enjoying it. That's the gold, you know? That you got out and you've got, you know, enjoyed yourself, you exp maybe experience a bit of paranormal. That's your personal journey. You don't need a you don't need people to clap you on the back for that. It'd be nice if you could. It'd be nice if you could, you know, your channel was in a situation where you could turn it into a job. But with the real paranormal, it's very difficult to do that. But in the meantime, enjoy what you're doing, you know? Do it for yourself, you know? If people enjoy what you're doing, that's a bonus. But most of all, just enjoy it for yourself, you know? I don't know if that helps. Here's something I wanted to get feedback on. It was an incident that happened two weeks ago. I was sitting here editing and I decided to get up to go over to the kitchen units over there to make myself a cup of tea. Now I had to pass my kitchen table which is here. On that kitchen table is a glass exactly like this. Now the glass can't remember why it was inverted, it was upside down on the table, but that's where it was, right? And it's right on the kitchen table. As I pass the as I pass the glass on the kitchen table, the 
glass explodes outwards with a lot of force. I mean, like, I got hit in the face. It, it, you know, I was lucky I didn't get glass in my eye, but it was a, it was a rapid expansion just as I passed. Now, we could call it paranormal if we want, but ever since that happened, I've been trying to look for a, a scientific or a logical explanation for why a glass that's upside down on the table would blow, explode outwards, you know? One thing to make note of is the glass was on the table for some time. I can't remember how long it was. It was there a long time. So it didn't wash it in hot water and all of a sudden it's in a cold environment. That could cause a glass to crack. Now, I'm not 100% sure was there a flaw in the glass. I'm nearly sure there wasn't because if I, seen, if I see a, a crack in a glass, I'm going to throw it away. Because that crack is going to get bigger. Obviously, there's going to be bacteria uh, trapped in the in the in the. But was there minute cracks? Did it get did it get bumped about and there's tiny microscopic cracks? So was the glass weak? You know already. But why would it explode outwards? Is another thing. Now. Because it was upside down there, you have the air around it, right? Which is a certain temperature. I might be on the right track here. Right, the glass is, is on the table. It's right on the table. The air around it may, may be a completely different temperature for some reason than the air trapped inside the glass. So if the air inside the glass has got more pressure than the air outside the glass, would that explain why the glass would go outwards? Maybe or maybe not. The reason why I'm saying that is if if there was if the pressure inside the glass was is greater than the pressure outside the glass, it would just lift the glass slightly and the pressure of the air would go out. So I'm still scratching my head with that one. But that wasn't pleasant actually. You know, why did it suddenly decide to explode? just as I pass it and I get showered with glass. I don't know. When it did when it did shatter, it shattered like a car windscreen. There was bits and pieces of small pieces of glass every foot every place. It wasn't like there was big lumps of glass or anything. It just it's it ex it exploded into tiny pieces like a wind car windscreen uh, broke. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's one... It's one that's going to stick in my head for a while. But if anybody else has a logical explanation, I'd be... Uh, well, uh, I'm more willing to listen to some somebody that has a logical explanation for that. Because I don't have one at the moment. People have asked me about the future of the channel, what's the plans? Well, it's been a difficult two years. It started off two years ago where I fell through the floor of an abandoned building. At least I can laugh about it now. 
things up. Stating the obvious was extra funny, actually. statement was true but this statement is completely false because I wasn't okay the extent of the damage was hip damage and knee damage that I'm still suffering to this day which put a spanner in the works for the last two years on and off let's just say I suffer you know, at the best of times, with, uh, with chronic pain on and off, this didn't make it. This didn't uh, make things better. It made it worse. But the thing was, up until that point, there was no signs on those buildings would do not enter. This time, and on every single building. It says, warning, dangerous buildings, or do not enter dangerous buildings, or whatever. But if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And I won the stupid prize. At the start of the channel, I was doing abandoned exploring. I was going into abandoned houses and abandoned buildings and filming those and then it went when I had a paranormal experience in an abandoned hospital I turned to the paranormal almost completely the thing is since 2016 2017 more and more buildings became unaccessible because the trend of abandoned exploring got more and more and more I, most of the buildings that I went into had suffered fire damage at some point or some sort of vandalism and a particular hospital um, some paranormal investigators went into that hospital at one point and made the mistake of showing where they got in and shortly after that that hospital building was burnt to the ground after that well it was half burnt which left it in a very dangerous condition after that none of the buildings around it were accessible because it was all it was all uh, barricaded up there was no it was it was over and done with nobody could go in there anymore and it was the same with a lot of other buildings now some of the buildings you know i i done an abandoned explorer in the beginning and i said right well let's do a paranormal investigation and do some evps and do some ghost box possibly or whatever and i arrive arrive at the location and it's either renovated or knocked to the ground and something else built in its place so those kind of locations have become very very scarce that's why i turned to outdoor locations like forests and woods and that kind of thing because i'm not going to go driving around halfway around the country looking for abandoned buildings because half the time looking for those abandoned buildings is it costs money to for petrol and all that kind of stuff now a lot of people have turned to official buildings where they pay money to do a paranormal investigation i 
to me that's an extortion. It's a lot of money for a couple of hours of filming, which a paranormal investigation takes more than a couple of hours, a proper one like. So, you know, I'm not, and, and there isn't that many of them around here. You know, there is a couple in that, but, you know, I can't do that every week. So you have to try and find some way of doing it without it costing you too much money. Especially in this day and age, you know what I mean? I'm sort of going through a bad spell at the moment, but when I get out, most of the time it will be sort of outdoor locations, depending on the weather. So we'll see how we go, because I mean, like, we... I do go to some nice, beautiful places and I haven't even filmed, like, because I'm just going out and relaxing and that. Some of those places could be investigated at night time. And I have the equipment, sort of, to do the job, sort of thing. So, you know, and this brings me on to the, uh, a question I was asked about what do people need to go out and, and do an investigation? So we're going to go into that next. I do get asked a lot about equipment that people would need to just get started. And the answer to that one is kind of simple. What are What is your purpose of going out to do a ghost hunt. It's to either capture or to hear some sort of paranormal activity. So what do you need for that? You need a camera, which everybody has a phone, which um, a lot of people, a lot of people stream on their phones or uh, record video on their phones. So you already kind of have a camera. Um, I normally use a camcorder, a Sony night vision camcorder. Um, but if you are, you know, if you, if you haven't got much money and you have a good phone, you have a good camera, use that. I used to see a lot of people starting out, going out and nobody can see anything. So lighting is very important. Yes, there's a light on your phone, but it's shit. Try and get a good light. So, there is frames you can get for putting your phone in, and you've got little attachments at the top. You can get little lights that can go in there. Um, and if you can, try to get an external mic. If you can't, you're, you're, fine. you're fine with your camera and your light. But make sure you've got light. Lighting is very important. There's no point in filming in the dark when you can't see anything. Because I've, I've, I've gone through so many ghost hunts where I can hear the people talking and a tiny little dot of light now and again and the rest of the time I can't see anything. So light up the area that you're filming in. And there's plenty of different kinds of lights. And, you know, there's camera mounting lights that you can put onto these frames for the, your, say, your phone camera. You, you get the little frame and you have the little attachments where you can put in these lights. Um, it, you know, it does a good job. And it's got handles on it so you can hold it and stuff, you know. So, you know, other than that, I use a camcorder. Um... I've been using 20-year-old Sony night vision cameras uh, for the last couple of years. I've no modern equipment at all, apart from uh, this camcorder here, which was my... I owe a lot to this camera, but um, it's broke. It, there's, there's something wrong with the... the um, the lens is kind of shifted and it kind of, when I turn it on, I can see the corner of the of the lens and stuff. There's something, 
not right with it. But this isn't night vision. It's uh, just an ordinary camera. But for ordinary, uh, for ordinary uh, filming, it done the trick. And I had a horseshoe uh, mount where I could put lights on top and all the rest of it. Uh, and it's very light. Actually, the Sony night vision cameras that I use on an investigation are actually quite heavy because they're they were made very very sturdy way back those are very light and plasticky and i know it's sony in that but i dropped it a couple of times and it's it hasn't uh it's 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 uh it's bearing some battle wounds let's just say but the night the older night vision cameras were you know they're pretty they're pretty good with night vision you need a ir lighting which is the infrared you know but if you're just starting out you know just start off with ordinary camera if you can if you got one and again lighting's important sort of thing this is a basic light and it was actually quite cheap you put four four double A's in the back you can charge it yes yeah, so you can charge you know if you have uh, four double A's that are uh, rechargeable you can charge it with a mini USB there and you can up and down the brightness with this button here it's a, it's, it's a basic light but very reliable and if you want a softer light you just change out you change out the screens you just swap them around Do you know simple they're uh, held together with magnetics just little magnets that has worked wonders because there's a I can't remember how many LEDs is on that, but there's a lot. 20 quid or less than 20 quid. Don't know if they've gone up, up since or whatever. Uh, recorders. Now, we're talking about EVPs or in general audio. I don't know. Um, right. A group that I worked with in the past. Do you know this thing about the older recorders, the waveform recorders, the older, um, the older digital recorders? They've kind of got they're they're not perfect, and they're kind they're kind of noisy, and a lot of people like that background audio support, and there can be very expensive recorders like the. DR60, Panasonic DR60. This was £15. And this was recommended to me by the team that I worked with. And it's uh, VN-4100. PC. You can get a 4100 without the PC. Well, the thing is, the one with the PC has got a, a a USB, so you can transfer your files onto your computer. Um, partly that's very good, but that cost me fifteen quid second hand. It's an old recorder, so there we go. Uh, the newer recorders, you can actually get a decent recorder for around. They used to be about 50 or 60 quid. It was the Tascam DR05. I don't know if I have it with me. Where is it? No. No, I haven't got it with me. The other option is... And there was another team I worked with. And they, they swore, swore of these. And it's the Zoom H1. Do you know? It's a... Uh, it's double microphone at the top. It's very light and plasticky compared to the uh, uh, compared to the DR05. 
the DR05 is actually a well built and good recorder. Um, what the team that I worked with used these for was putting a putting a pair of headphones on and popping up the gain and walking around and having bi bionic hearing so that they could hear the slightest things. Um, you could use it also as a microphone for your camera. Do you know? One of my favourites because it's easier to. It's a, the Taz Cam is easy enough to use, but I find this one easier, and that is the Zoom uh, H4n, and it's a quite a, a bulky little thing. Um, a lot of uh, radio stations used to use these for radio interviews um, outside the radio station if you're interviewing people on the street. Do you know? But uh, with a, a good recorder and you're doing EVPs, sometimes the environmental noise is good for a, a background audio support. But if it's extremely quiet, you can always put on a static from a radio or a dripping tap or something like that, you know. So that is it. What else have I got? Uh, that's basically it. If you're if you're starting out and you're not quite sure are you going to like it or not, just go out with your phone and a good light, you know. Um, as far as the stuff to get before you get the complicated experimental gadgets, audio and visuals. So I've gone for a, I've gone for a scope. I recently picked this one up, but it's it's what was it? Thirty pounds or something like that. 30, I think it was thirty pounds. It's not it's not a brilliant scope, but it's sort of okay. You know, it's used. Uh, it's got a good night vision, uh, it's got a good IR light, the zoom is not brilliant on it. i done another video on another scope that was a reasonably priced scope, and that was much better. With scopes, what you can do is you can, if you are investigating in a forested area or an outside area, you can home in... On, on a, you can home in on an area from a great distance in the pitch dark with a good scope and all you need is the inbuilt IR light because they're usually pretty good you know I also have a night box which I'll show you now in a second but you know if you're going basic or whatever you don't need these, you know. I'm just, I'm just showing you. We're gone on from basic to audio and visual before you get the experimental gadgets and stuff. I've done a video on this before. This is a Bob Love um, scope, night vision scope, and it is. It actually is. This is this is pretty good. Um, the audio was crap on it, but the visuals is pretty good. It's not a wide. It's a very wide field of view, but it goes a great distance, especially if you're in a wooded area at night time. Now, if you turn this on, there's a little cap here. During the daytime, this cap should be on. To stop damage in the inside too much like getting in so there is a filter on the end of the lens here which you need to put on during the day but it's got good day you know it, it's got good good filming during the day as well the audio is a bit shit now I don't know where the actual microphone is 
but there is actually a microphone in it and you can hear yourself talk but it's kind of like it's it's muffled it's 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 very very low but in terms of of long distance night vision in the complete dark this does the trick it's got the built-in ir it's got a picatinny rail on the side where you can actually get uh, a scope mount where you can actually put another ir light if you wish now if you turn this on and shine a torch close to it what it does it it goes into a kind of a, a full spectrum mode actually the other scope actually does that too so you have you get this kind of a a pinky vision so that for me does as a both a night vision scope and a full spectrum camera it can take photographs it can take film it does take audio but the audio isn't brilliant but if you are looking for a long distance surveillance kind of thing and that is your boy and it's pretty it's it was reasonable i think it was 45 pounds or something like that and it comes in this bag so um yeah that is pretty pretty good um they're for designed for hunting and wildlife watching and stuff like that so um that's the bob love now the reason why i mentioned the bob love is believe it or not some of my investigations and some of my ghost hunts were actually done on a camera like this which is a body camera this is the bob love um i don't know what model it is there's newer models out now and this records up to 1296p i think it is the newer one a friend of mine bought the newer one which is 1475p or something like that so um they have gone up in price though that's the problem now they are designed to be mounted on your your you know vest like this but i actually sometimes when i that's the way i use it there the night vision is pretty good on it um i do have extra night vision lights with me when i'm using this sometimes i'll put it on a rig with extra night vision but the night vision on this is it's not too bad you know it's not too bad the thing about night vision is if you go out to a beach at night time or a place where there's nothing for the light to reflect off you're not going to see very much distance at all the same with ordinary light but if you go into a wooded area with forests and trees and stuff there's loads of things for the light to bounce off and these are pretty good at doing the job the uh, audio is not too bad um there is a bit of a fisheye lens on it too which is you know i wish it didn't have that but it's to give a wider field of view there's also a laser pointer on it if you need a laser pointer for some flipping reason and there is a, um, a photo mode, a motion detect mode, and you can take still photographs with it. Can it go into, no it can't, it can't go into uh, full spectrum mode. Um, it can, you can have an automatic mode where you can go from day vision to night vision, but that can be a pain in the ass because if you go if you have it on automatic mode and you are in the dark and it's in night vision and then you you travel towards 
some sort of light source, it'll go back into day vision. It'll just click. It'll keep clicking over and back. It's a pain in the ass. I'd rather just manually, uh, manually uh, change from day vision to night vision. But that is, and it's it's kind, it's light and it's handy and it's. If I'm going out and I want to do an investigation, I want to cover a lot of ground. I'm not going to carry heavy equipment, so I might take this. You know, the only thing is it doesn't zoom in and out for some reason. But it's the video quality is pretty good with the 1296p. So that is the bubble of. Uh, body camera. More long distance night vision. We got the night box uh, binoculars, which are night vision as well, and comes in a nice tufty case. It also has a mount for the top of it, so you can put it on a helmet. And you can sort of do this, you know, with a tactical helmet. I have a tactical helmet where I can put lights on and stuff. And I actually have a mount to put on my, this camera, so I can see in the corner of my eye. I can actually walk around a location in the dark. But I'm not dependent on the camera, but the thing is... The camera's already zoomed in one uh, one time zoom and that. You try to walk around using just night vision with these, you're gonna you're gonna feel sick. You know, you you, you kind of feel like you've got motion sickness. Again, it's got a little cap for the uh, the daytime. It's got a night vision light. Uh, place for an SD card up there. Um, this is kind of like a screen. Um, it doesn't have audio. Um, but it has very good visuals. And very good. Um, very good. Um, long distance. In the pitch dark. Um, night vision. Um, they're kind of, it's kind of got that rubbery stuff that normally degrades after a couple of years and I have to try and polish it off sort of thing, but, um, it is a good camera, um, you got your SD card goes in there and it's got a protective cover on it sort of thing to keep it away from moisture and stuff like that. Again, no audio with this, but extremely good uh, narrow field night vision kind of thing. And it's got a camera mount at the bottom as well, so you could have this focusing in on an area at a long distance and just have it running if you wish. But again, it's got a mount, it comes with the mount for to put on the, uh, on the helmet. But I wouldn't walk around with it because it's already zoomed in, uh, you know, plus one sort of thing. And um, it's not good at sort of very near things. So it kind of, you kind of feel sick and dizzy if you try to uh, walk around dependent totally on these. But... You know, when it comes to ghost hunting and stuff, not an awful lot of people think about long distance, you know? And when it comes to outdoor locations, I kind of like to think of it as kind of like hunting, except for it's ghosts. So, if you can, if you can capture something at a long distance, you're not starkling it because you're not in the immediate area. Do you know? You're 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 in an area focusing on a on a, a distant location where you're far away from. 
so you're not disturbing it and um, yeah you know it's 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 a handy uh, thing to sort of look into if you're doing sort of um, paranormal investigations in an open area like forests or, or woods or uh, outdoor locations and stuff like that. If you're in the UK or in Northern Ireland or in the or in Ireland, you may have you may know a shop called CEX. Well, I went into CEX a while back. Well, it was a number of years ago, and I picked up this particular camera. And this is the what is it? It's the SX40 uh, HS, and. It has a record function, it's got the flippy screen, I can't remember how many pixels it's got, but when I looked up this camera, there was loads of people, and there was a couple of, of photographers that made comments on this camera, saying that if they were filming a feature film, they'd have no problem. Uh, using this camera. This camera is 17 years old. I picked that up for £40. It's a bridge camera. Um, it's got a... Uh, um, it's sealed at the moment. It, it, there's a plastic cover on it. But it, you can put a light on the top. Um, uh, when Rachel started out working with me, she actually was using this camera, and it's a pretty good little uh, little camera. Uh, the visuals is pretty good. It's not night vision or anything like that. It's just an ordinary camera. But if you're if you're looking for, you know, a camera other than a phone, maybe some place like CEX would be a place to look 40 pounds and it's was 40 pounds about five years four or five years ago i have it since do you know when i bought it i bought it in i think it was 2017 just before the donegal my first donegal international rally and i filmed it on this camera and I've done a couple of videos, and they're the highest uh, viewed videos on my channel. One of them has just gone past 21,000 views. It was done on a 17-year-old camera. And it's a pretty good... Pretty good... You know, when you're in a place like that, you can pick up the camera, and you can physically examine it yourself you can try it out rather than taking a gamble on ebay or whatever um you may pay a little bit more because yes shops have to get their cut or whatever but this is uh, this is uh this is done us very very well now it came with two it came with two uh two batteries and those batteries are, I think I need to change them because I'm not getting as as long of uh, film time with them anymore. So I may need to change them out. But you know, sometimes when you have older older equipment, um, you're going to have to do that. But you know, once you know the serial number of the the battery, you should be able to get them easy enough. Saying that. Some countries, and it's sometimes it's difficult to import um, import batteries because of these, you know, flight restrictions on on uh, lithium ion batteries and stuff, and the um, the risk of fire and stuff like that. So sometimes they're hard to get. You can you can get them come up on Amazon and stuff like that. You press it, and then they say. Sorry, we don't post to your country, but if you take a good look, you'll find some place where, where you'll get them, you know. But um, 
that's the bridge the bridge camera um, you know and you can do selfie mode or whatever so photo and video and takes very good video I forgot to mention that that was the Canon uh, SX40 um, I didn't I don't think I mentioned that it was a Canon now I'm finally going to uh, just show you something a little bit a little bit out there if you know what I mean now zoom makes the H4n and the H1 so they're you know they're into sound and briefly they did make video cameras that were there was more technology in the sound than the video camera the video cameras weren't brilliant but they were pretty sturdy and had these um, um, these uh, microphones built into them and stuff like that similar to what's on this kind of thing and um, they thought let's have a device that has visuals and audio but still have focus more on the audio than the visuals but they did come out with another product which was this and it's the zoom q3 <laughs> i like the way they advertised it upload your videos to youtube i i have this as a kind of a as a voice recorder for evps and stuff like that but it is an actual camera now it's not a high resolution camera as such it's something like 380 or whatever it is 340 or 380 or whatever it is around the 300 mark and that but if you are investigating a place and you want cameras everywhere this was actually cheap i picked this up second hand on e ebay but i do use it more for the audio than the visuals and there's your little camera there you know and a little red light at the front to show you that it's recording it's got a color screen uh, it's got a color screen um, it's got also has you know a level meter on the audio and and stuff like that um does it take pictures i can't remember i think it does but i think it does um but it's very good quality uh sound takes i think t two um double a batteries but it's something something from the past do you know seeing as i am this far i'm gonna talk about budget spirit boxes and the cheapest spirit box i've got is this which cost me between 15 and 20 pounds because i bought a number of them for spares you know in case one goes faulty but for 15 and 20 quid at the time i bought a number of them because you know they were very very cheap now they take uh, four c batteries c size batteries which are the bigger batteries but i ran this with a c c to double a converters which are little tubes which you can push double a batteries into them and the tubes make them the size of the c battery and you can then fit them in so you can use four uh, double A's with the C converters. The C converters, they you can get D converters, D to double A uh, converters. You can get C 
to double A or triple A converters and they're only tubes, they're only little plastic tubes and they're only about a pound or two pounds for three or four of them um, and it also takes two double uh, A batteries to run the display now these are just radios so there's when you when you buy your radio for 15 or 20 quid hopefully they haven't gone up you take out all the screws in the back i think there's screws in in the battery compartment as well and gently bring them apart there's two circuit boards one at the front one at the back now there's a number of wires connecting each connecting one circuit board to the other one and they're they're all different colors you pick the white colored uh, wire and you cut it and then you put it back together and you have a spirit box that cost you 15 to 20 pounds so um and it's pretty it is pretty good and it is kind of it's sturdy and it's you know it's it's well made it's you you get modern radios now and they're just chips these have proper circuitry in them they're pretty they're pretty hefty boys when people start off with spur boxes they want to go straight into what everybody's got, PSP7. And boy do I hate the PSP7 with a passion. I think for 79 or 80 pounds or dollars for a small plastic piece of very cheaply made radios, don't like them at all. And they're flipping noisy. I know there's a mode, a quiet mode in that, but I just don't like them. My first spurt box when I started the paranormal investigating was a PSP 11 because Ghost Adventures was using one at the time. Yes, I know. But I thought the PSP 11 would be better and then the PSP7 and it's worse it's it just as noisy there is a mode for that as well but no for the price and the the cheaply uh, they're just cheaply made I'm sorry I don't mean to don't mean to junk on on companies and that but I'm just being honest one of my biggest disappointments was the S box from Ghost Stop. I got my S box and I got a free pen, which was a nice pen. And I got a key ring and it was a nice key ring. The spirit box wasn't so good at all. It had a habit of. It's noisy for a start. And when it scans, every so often it has this big static burst and it just it gives you a headache very, very quickly. But it did get get an alternative. No, I, I, I did buy the the S box. Hardly ever used it, but this is uh This is the brand. Let me see. It's like an S-Box. It looks like an S-Box, but it's this. TB-1. And that is uh, FM, AM, uh, linear and random scan. And it was cheaper than the... It was cheaper than the S-Box. And I had to import this, and it was still cheaper than the S box. And it takes a similar battery to a Nokia 3210, so you can buy spares and you can switch them out, or you can just uh, 
charge them up with a mini USB. Um, does it have a record feature like the... I think it does actually, it does. It takes a little SD card as well. Um, it's got the usual stuff like uh, you can charge your phone, a little light, actually. Can't remember how to use it now. But same display as the same display as the, the S box. Um it does have static in it, but it's not as annoying as the S box. You know. But um I think this one was forty forty five pounds, I think uh Happy Droid said that these were uh, retailing at and it's the one that I'm using at the moment and that's that little basic one there go over his, to his channel subscribe he's got a Facebook and I think he's actually doing at the moment because there's a financial crisis and stuff he's actually showing people how to make their own spurt box for Jeep and I must look into that because it's um, I've never seen somebody actually revealing their secrets and that but it's uh, you know it's nice that somebody's doing that now Happy Droid has been experimenting with a number of different boxes and this is just this is his basic spurt box I think it's brilliant it is pretty good. It's a multi-band radio. Two FMs. One of them is air band. AM and nine. Yes, nine shortwave bands. Pretty quiet box. Um, been using it here on the system uh, with backwards or, uh, you know, um, uh, back, uh, uh, reversed audio through the system here and it's been doing a great job the 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 low amount of statics means that i can control it if you have a very loud box like a psp7 it's very hard to quieten that down without um losing some of your audio now this piece of wire is not part of it it's got it it has its own uh, antenna but because I don't want to have the antenna stuck up in front of the screen, I have this wire. So that's basically it. Um, and I'm nearly sure he said £45. Um, yes, he did. He said £45 at the time. He's got a... I think he's got a website or an SD site or some shopping site. He's on Facebook, he's on YouTube... If you're interested, and and he he shows a lot of us what he's uh, recently worked on and that, so go over to his YouTube channel and have a look at those. Actually, if you wanted a spurt box that sounded like a PSP seven, but has two different purposes, you could get yourself a Bofang UV ten. UV, it's I think it's a UV ten, a Bofang UV ten or UV ten V I think or something like that. Um, along with communicating with the rest of your team, you could communicate with the ghosties as well, because it's got a, it's got a radio as well. Now you might have to amplify this. It's got a... Uh 
two and a half millimeter jack. You get a two and a half millimeter to three millimeter jack conversion, and then you can plug it into an amplifier. And you just press, you press the side button there to go onto the FM radio. Scan up or down. Just hold your finger, and Bob's your uncle. But this one is the Bofang UV13 Pro. And actually this is louder, but it is slower at scanning. So it's slower than the other one. Again, three buttons. And that's the wrong button actually. It's the top one. There you go. Press the scan, hold it. You can actually hear that in real time. Obviously you can't make it slower or faster. But anyway, just thought I'd, just thought I'd, I just thought I'd show you those. Um, do you know they're they're only about thirty pounds? Do you know? And they look, you know, way back years ago, you you had radios like these. They were pretty expensive. But companies like Bofang, you know, they're knocking out some pretty good uh, handheld walkie talkies here um, they're ham radios by the way just in case anybody's whinging that oh you can't do them without a license um, they are pretty robust you know um, the most popular one was the UV5R but it can't do the scan thing like this these can the uh, Appidroid was the person that, that uh, first uh, he'd done a video on, it was a uh, GT3, the Bofang GT3, and you had to amplify the sound, so you had to have the 2.5 to 3mm jack, and you had to amplify it. It was pretty noisy, but I mean, they, they were cheap radios too, so... But uh, the 13 Pro seems to scan without it having to be amplified, you know. The next things are the the gadgets. They don't they don't give you the evidence like visuals and audio do, but people like to use them as trigger objects to see will they respond on request and we're going to start off with REM pods now REM pods ooh what I there's nothing really nice I can say about them they're very expensive and light and cheap but Basically, I can't remember what the name of the instrument was, but it's based on an instrument where you you move your hands up and down and it makes different noises. Um, uh, there was ghost hunting companies making cheap ramp pods. And cheap, I mean £60, which isn't cheap. And... When I seen them, I said, they look like something i seen before. And guess what they were? They were door handle alarms. Instead of this piece of wire that you hang on the door, you replace it 
with an antenna and you connect a light to the speaker and then you have your cheap REM pod that people were selling for 60 quid how much did they cost to make? Two pound, I think it was two pounds forty or something, with the ninety nine cents antenna and a light bulb, a LED bulb. See, they were one pound something each. If you bought six, you know, if you bought six of them, you paid a fiver or something like that. If you are not inclined to push to replace this wire basically you cut this wire and you f you strip the end of the wire you connect it to an antenna if you're too lazy to do that you just buy these this one has a, a light but you don't need it it just works you can go into a location and have these without any modifications at all and you can hang them on door handles or you can use them as REM pods because they do the same flipping thing without the bulb it's 125 each or something like that can't complain about that and because they're so cheap cheap you can make loads of them and put them in all different rooms if you're in a big building and that I made a number of these and I give some of them away and here is another thing and it's a well, what does it cost me five pounds five pounds it's a static detector folks it's a bit of a pain in the ass that it has kind of a watch battery or uh, you know the remote control for your your car you know your uh, key fob one of those coin size batteries it's a static detector folks a fiver and you can zero and it, it detects Red is a negative charge, which is shown there, and blue is a positive charge, and then you just zero them in. There you go. Probably picking up static from my clothes. There you go. A lot of people say... Some investigators say, when you go into a building and you feel the sort of spider web type of feeling, staticky feeling, it usually is static, and not many people have static meters. That was five pounds, you know. So, basically, oh, I didn't plan this video at all. I'm just making stuff up as I'm going along. But I thought I would show you some of the basic stuff that I have. But it all stemmed from one question. And it turned into this big conversation. But it is coming on to 2 o'clock in the morning. And I have to get some sleep. So I will see you later. Hope you enjoyed the conversation and chat and uh, I'm going to try and bring back some sort of podcast where we can have conversations with people again because I like having conversations with people so let's see how we go I know one person is, is up for the is up for it up for a chat somebody that's in into the uh into ITC. So we'll see how it goes folks. But I'm gonna go because it's flipping it's getting late folks. But uh hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Bye.